Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John Matthew. So we continue with the next part or the next level in complex analysis that is defining the limit and continuity for a complex function. And once we do that, we will be able to understand or define the derivative of a complex function. In the last lesson, I told you complex valued functions and real valued functions are completely different. But now the good news. When we learn the derivative, you will understand that most of the rules and the formulae work just like the real valued function. So the good news is you don't have to memorize more formulae or anything to work on with the derivatives or the integrals, but the meaning and the dimensions in which these graphs are, are completely different. So let's start with the limits and continuity of a complex valued function. Okay, so once more, suppose we have a complex valued function. The input will be a complex number and the output will be another complex number which I am going to call W. And in our videos, the input will be labeled as X plus IY and the output will be labeled as U plus IV. And like I told you in the last video, you have to understand the graph is in four dimensions. That is the way we are going to learn here. There are other methods also. So the input will be the set plane which has the xy and the output will be the w plane uv. And we may or may not consider the entire plane for the input. For example, I can consider the input to be a circle. That means I will consider only the points on the circle as the input. And correspondingly, if I write a function like sin z, come on, I can plug in the complex numbers one by one and I'll get the output, 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 output. It can be a bigger circle, it can be a smaller circle, or it can be a parabola, it can be something else which I do not know. So you have to understand the input will be here and the output will be over here. First of all, you have to understand, when I talk about a function like z square or maybe z cube or e to the power z, every input will have only one output. This is called a single valued function. That means one input, one output. But if I consider the complex function z to the power 1 by 5, for every input, I will get five outputs. So this is a multi-valued function. So right now, we will talk only about the single-valued functions. Now look at this. I have the domain space. And let's say this is my domain. And let me call the domain as the region R. Or I can call it D. So when I define the domain, I mean I am in the xy plane or the z plane and my output will be in the w plane. Suppose I have a point z0. Remember it is a complex number. Let's say z0 equal to a plus ib. I want to consider all the numbers. Do you know why we define limits in real numbers? Because no human being knows a number which is bigger or smaller to any other number. For example, if I ask you, what is the number or the real number just bigger than 1, you will never be able to give me the exact answer. You might tell me it is 1.01, .01, but I'll ask you, isn't 1.001 .001 even nearer? Or maybe 1.00001 even nearer to 1? So we are not able to define or find the number just bigger or smaller than 1. 
but with the help of limits, we solve that problem. We will just write limit x tends to 1. Now I am able to understand, oh, I am not able to find the exact number near 1. So I am doing my analysis with a group of numbers very near to 1. So it can be on the right or it can be on the left. But when it comes to complex number, it becomes more complex, it becomes more confusing. Because it is not only from right or left, can you see? There are billions and billions of numbers, mathematically speaking, infinite number of numbers above and below and below and before, maybe to the left, maybe to the right. So we have a whole neighborhood of complex numbers here. And corresponding to every complex number, I will get an output f of z0. Now look at this. The limit exists. For example, I say limit z tends to z0, the complex function z0. Suppose I get the value very near to L. That means I plug in any complex number very near to z0 and I am getting the output complex number L. Look at this. Z0 is a complex number and my output is also another complex number, let's say alpha plus i beta. So for every input very near to a plus i b, if I get an output alpha plus i beta, then I say the limit exists. But the most important point, it is not only about left side and the right side, it can be any complex number in a neighborhood of Z0. Okay. Now, the next question, continuity. Now, I think you're getting a rough idea. We used to say a function is continuous if it is continuous at each and every input point. But now, we have the input space and the output space and corresponding to every input, we will have billions and billions and billions, mathematically, infinite number of neighbors. So, if you are getting the same output, or not same, approximately same, that is what the limit tells you, then we say the function is continuous. Now, the last definition but the most, most important definition, the derivative of a complex function. Now I am going to define the derivative of a complex function, which I am going to denote by f dash of z. Now like in real valued function, I am going to claim that the derivative will exist only if it is differentiable at each and every point in the domain. So I'm going to define the derivative at a particular point called z0. So the derivative at a particular point z0 will exist only if the limit, you might remember this limit, limit delta z tends to 0, f of z0 plus delta z minus f of z0, the whole divided by delta z. You might remember this because you learned something very similar called method of first principles when you learn derivative for the first time. So it looks similar but like I told you in video lesson 1 and 2, they are not the same. So the only difference is this limit will exist only if it exists for all the points nearby. Look at this, to approach a complex number, we have millions and millions and millions of possibilities. We can approach through a line, we can approach through a curve, we can approach through a rectangle. So we can approach, the approach is like what you call infinite number of possibilities. And if you get the same answer for all the possibilities, we say the derivative exists. Maybe right now it's a little bit confusing, 
But later, when we learn the derivation for the analyticity, come on. Now we are going to define one of the most important words that is called analytic function. If a function is differentiable at each and every point in the domain, then we say that the function is analytic. Okay, now look at this. Don't. Now look at this. You should be very careful. We are talking about complex valued functions. In real valued functions, if I ask you what is the derivative, maybe you'll tell me it is the gradient of the tangent. But wait a minute. We are not talking about real valued functions. But here we are just comparing the output to the input. That's it. So don't run into a conclusion. It is the gradient of the tangent. But rather you understand we are trying to understand how the output of the function behaves according to the input. Or in other words, look at this. Suppose this is the input. And I'm taking, I'm moving in this direction. That means I am thinking what will happen to my output. Output is over here. This is the Z plane. This is the W plane. So maybe the output is moving very fast. That is exactly what I want to understand. If I move a little bit in the input, what happens to my output? So we are measuring the rate in which the output is changing with respect to the input. So let's discuss once more. We talked about limit, then we talked about the continuity, and then the most important thing, derivative at a particular point. And a function which is differentiable at every point in the domain is called an analytic function. So I'll be back with more videos like this. So if you like this video, do subscribe and share. So we'll meet very soon. So till then, my friends, bye.